Hi, this is Ryan with BetterTattooing.com. Today we're going to be talking about some stuff to do with needles. Hey. All right, now that that's over, give a bit of a heads up. We're all sick at the house right now middle of the pandemic so I've got my water out here I've taken some notes my brain's acting a little bit slow um, but everyone is kind of asleep in the house minus the baby so I figure why not come out and just try to do do a video or two just try to stay up on this stuff so anyways question I wrote up on the board today is um, why are big groupings hard to use um, and this is kind of a misconception we could say or it's just like badly worded because each needle grouping that you're going to use when you're doing tattoos responds to the body differently. So I guess to add a little bit of specifics to this, a little bit of specificity, um, we're going to be looking at why when you start using larger needles, larger quantity of needles uh, in any sort of grouping, why the skin reacts differently to it. So here's the idea, right? Your skin has tensile strength. It has sheer strength and it just it's able to absorb blows, right? So we have our skin, protective outer layer, the epidermis, stuff that has all the other things, the hair follicles, the nerves, the vascularization, all the good stuff is in the dermis, and our connective tissues and fatty layer is going to be underneath it. Now, when we do a tattoo, we're using a machine to drive a needle into the skin that deposits pigment at the top, hopefully the top half of the dermis, right? Now, what happens is the bigger the needle grouping gets, and bigger means like a, a greater quantity. Say, uh, layman's terms, if we have three needles going in the skin, we'll do a three round, right? Um, versus, we'll do a 35, flat. When they interact with the skin, they're gonna behave differently when they come into contact with it. Now, why is that? Well, first reason is because there's gonna be increased uh, surface area that we're going to be interacting with, right? When you have something that's small and sharp, there's going to be less feedback from the cells that are all clumped together on the top of the epidermis, um, especially with a good stretch. Might as well just throw that in there right off the hop. You have to have be stretching the skin correctly, and we could use maybe the same force, right, of stretch being applied for both of these groupings, an extra large flat wide versus a tight round. We're the same on this. The three round is going to meet less resistance because there's less surface area that it's interacting with. So it's better able to just like pass through the epidermis and get into the top of the dermis. Well, if we have something like a 35 flat, let's say that we're looking at this this way. This is a bad angle to be tattooed. But anyways, what we're going to have is a whole bunch of needles, right? It just it's, it's going to be huge in relation to this. So. That's my babies. I don't know if you're picking that up or not, but they're having fun at least. When this 35 flat is going to come in, it's going to have much more of this scaffolded brick type of interwoven skin cells to try and break through, right? So all of the connections between the cells are going to add additional strength. So it's going to be able to push that back. It's not going to absorb, it's going, it's going to absorb the force, but it's not going to absorb it and allow the needles to pass through. So it's kind of like, if you think about those, uh, those old nail bed sitting people, you know, like the, the I don't know, side shows or whatever, where they'd have a bed of nails and somebody land and they break bricks on top of them. Well, that, that works because you're displacing that weight over you know, multiple different points on this uh, like flat board thing, right? So it's not just like you're having a 200 pound man sitting on one nail, because if you were to do that, that single point would have so much force going through it, it would go straight through the body. But you disperse it over a larger amount of area, then you know that force is being more distributed and it's not as likely to like absorb it through that single point. That's just what happens with these things, right? It's just like sitting on a bed of nails, which is such a bad thought graphic or whatever to put across with this, but whatever. Um, <clears throat> that happens, I mean, there's just gonna be natural give. And it doesn't matter how much you pull on that person's skin, especially if you're coming out the same angle of insertion, you know, the same machine speed, the same amount of bands maybe holding it about against the back of the tube, and the same types of tubes, right? Plastic versus steel. All of those things are just gonna make it so that like, they have an influence, it's a variable. 
that's going to influence how those needles are going to be going through the skin. On average, like, I mean, you can only stretch the skin so hard, and if the skin is dry, if it's on somebody who maybe is a bit older, it's thinner, right? Maybe it's been more worn out, it's suffered a burn recently, or other trauma, things like this. The, the skin is just not going to be as accepting to having something extremely large shoved through it. So, why do we use these? Well, you know, like most tattooers don't use them all the time. On average, you know, we're gonna be using needles from, and I'm gonna stay away from single needle. I know there's a ton of people that use it and you know, there's gonna be people saying, it's, you know, you get blowouts all the time or you don't get blowouts. It's the best, but I don't, I'm not worrying about that. I'm, today I just wanted to think about big groupings, right? So let's go from a three round. For most of the line work that we're gonna be doing, we'll say at most a 13, um, which the actual size of that hollow or loose really is gonna change how it interacts with the skin, which is not a big deal. And um, on our mags or flats, which I prefer flats versus mags, but it's just probably because I've been doing this a long time. Everyone's got their own little niche thing that they like to. I'll use a nine mag like all hell. Anyways, um, we're usually gonna be going anything from a five up to I mean, 13, maybe 15. The 13 needle grouping, at least in my experience, is kind of like that maximum safe space, right? Where you're not rushing, you're not trying to do much stuff, you don't have to crank your machine way the hell up. And I mean, most tattoo machines can handle them pretty well with a little bit of modification, you know? Um, you're not gonna have to really change your technique to try and like fit these these bigger needles, right? Like that's that's our cutoff. This is usually when you buy like a coil liner, which I don't know why they don't do too much of this with the, the rotaries now, which you know, I guess we can get that in another video, but they're usually gonna be like small grouping liners, right? They're gonna take something that's in this range and they're gonna segment it into like small is usually gonna be like three to five. We'll go five to nine is gonna be medium liners. Nine to 13 or anything above is gonna be large grouping liner machines, right? And same with like if you're pushing mags and flats or color machines, you know, or shading machines, whatever. They're usually gonna be broken up into a couple spaces like that. And usually we top out, cause I mean, if you're pushing anything bigger than a 13, you're really having to impart a lot of force on that needle to be able to break the skin, right? So yeah, that's why they're kind of hard to use, right? Your body is actually gonna be fighting back against this the whole time that it's getting done. Um, Single needles, I mean, like if we think about, you know, doctors, seamstresses, you know, piercers, all of them, I mean, you know, they're gonna be using a single needle and I mean, like a seamstress has got, you know, a driving needle can drive it through friggin' dried leather, right? I mean, it's not hard, but if you've seen a seamstress try to push, you know, five curved needles at the same time through a chunk of leather, you know, that's not gonna happen very easily. Like sh that, whoever it is, is gonna just have to be really buff to do that. <laughs> You're probably gonna end up probably actually getting hurt instead of being able to accomplish the job that they have been given. Um, so yeah, one thing people say you can get around this with as well, probably the final thing to touch on this is like curves versus flats. So um, I get to see a lot of info and I think we can go into this in another video, maybe a bit more in depth, but I see a lot of info online that, that's reporting that curves are more effective at, you know, putting pigment into the body than flats. And I don't, I don't agree with that. I think it all comes down to technique, but most of the visualizations I've seen is that, you know, here's our, our skin. And when a needle is striking it, right, what happens is with a flat is it causes it to go concave and the needles on the outside are hitting, right? And they're not actually helping with the skin. Now, if you, if you think about that, just think about it for a second. That doesn't really make sense, right? Why would the force of something coming down radiate out one to the edges of where the needles are without actually impacting a little bit further over? And why would it be so concave? Why would the curves all of a sudden be designed to fit in that pocket, right? This it doesn't, it really doesn't make sense to me. If a flat needle's coming down, it's not gonna be flush with the sides of the needles. It's going to be pushing flat, which is actually gonna cause a wider curvature of the skin. The outside needles, I mean, especially if you're holding it flat, which we're never gonna be holding something perfectly perpendicular. We're not machines and the person we're tattooing is you know, a flat 2D plane. Um, it's always gonna have a bit of a bevel or a curve to it. Same with flats, right? Um, What's happening is that these, these may be going in at separate rates, but I mean, once the skin actually el elastics, you know, back up into place around the needles, those needles are all gonna be basically at the same depth, right? 
That's why flats are usually really good for doing black and gray shading if your machine's set up for it, or even for packing color, right? Curves, in my opinion, have always been for shading, right? When you are doing a tattoo and you want to have softer edges or softer this or softer that, what you do is top layer of the skin, if you're using a flat or you're using a round, usually you're going to change your angle right at how this thing is coming in. If we have needles that are gonna be coming in, let's say a four flat is coming straight down into the skin here. If it comes in the same way at the side, what's happening is you're getting different lengths of penetration inside the actual skin, right? Some are gonna be going in further while others aren't. So you're gonna be implanting superficial pigment at the top layers, I mean, depending on how you're moving, of course. Um, this could just tear up the top layer of skin a little bit more as it's moving forward. That allows these back needles to enter into the skin with a little bit less resistance because the skin's already chewed up. Um, and it can also trigger a bit of that, you know, healing part of your body coming into effect right away so that those immunological cells that we want to see around a tattoo when it's being done or when it's healing are better able to grab onto the pigment. That's pretty technical. I'm sick. I don't know how I did that. Anyways. <clears throat> the angle is going to matter more with this stuff versus not. Now, when you take a needle that's curved, right, and you do the same thing with it, let's just stretch this out a little bit more here before I cap that up. If we have one that's coming down and it's curved, right, same with one that is going to be <clears throat> at an angle, and what we're doing is we're losing even more of that penetration off this. So we're gonna be getting more pigment that's gonna be superficially laid into the top of the skin. Now you can tell this, or try this if you wanted to, by testing out some things with just like a, a round needle, right? When you're running around, you're trying to figure out depth specifically on the person's skin that you're doing. You're gonna be trying various different depths to see what has the best result, right? You don't just go and just bury it and go. I mean, if you do, it's metal, you know? <laughs> I don't. Um, you could go too deep. You know, you kind of got to understand the person's skin before you get going on it. Um, you're going to be doing stuff like this. And you can usually see that, like, right when you're about to that, that space where the, the needle is going to be implanting the skin perfectly, right? That's that spot, there, that sweet spot that you can feel that we, you know, are trained to empathetic, empathetically seek out. You're always going to see it's like, you know that you're only getting just the tip of that needle because that line, when you go a bit deeper, is thick. And maybe when it comes out, it's very thin and almost sparse, right? Because you can see what's being kicked out and blocked by the epidermis, what's actually being put into the skin. You know, and you can tell when you've gone way too deep <laughs> because you actually start putting too much pigment in, you get a bit of a blowout, maybe a wibble wobble, something like that, and it's just not good. Anyways, um, using curved needles does not make it easier for the, you know, needles to groupings and stuff to come in. I mean, more often than not, it's just gonna chew up the top layer of skin a little bit more, especially if we don't know how to use them. They're kind of like, this is kind of like 101 stuff, when learning how to use curved mags. And they've become ubiquitous inside the industry now. So it's like, when you're looking at these things and you're trying to use them, you really need to think about, you know, how can you build on these techniques and how are they gonna apply to something else, right? And your needle depths maybe flat, something like that. <clears throat> One second here. The other thing we should be looking for when we're doing all this is like, legit, just, you know, how, how are we like trying to understand each one of these these tools that we use all the time right a three round is not equivalent right it's not a, it's not going to be equivalent to a 35 like flat they don't act in the body correctly i mean if you're using bevel edge techniques and stuff like this to try and create gradient shading these can be fantastic but you're not using all the needles all the time right if you come in at a 45 and you get it into the right level and you come around like literally I'll do bevel lines like that. I'll grab, not a 35, I just, that's overkill for the most time, most parts um, or types of tattoos I'm doing. I might do anywhere from 11 to a 15 mag slash flat. I prefer flats with this, especially as like most of the mags you're gonna get, that woven spacing inside of them doesn't create actually like pretty good penetration. I want the needles even and next to each other when I'm doing a, a shade line. I'll come in and instead of doing it like straight down 90 degrees like perpendicular off the skin, I'll roll it in at like a 45 and I'll set these bottom needles in and I'll just single line, like this is not pulling a line, like the machine would have the back end off this, you're pulling against the back of the tube, anyways. And I just follow it, one side, rotate 45 on the other, pull it and your shading's done, two passes, 
it's super quick. Um, sitting there and, and flicking out off of this after you've already done some lines just over traumatizes the skin. You're always going to end up with these little spots anyways where it looks like you got some pigment in but maybe you didn't because your hand's not going to go at it like perfectly straight. Right? You're always going to have some spot that maybe is going to do this. You're going to roll instead of using your arm. You use your wrist too much. It, it, it'll become uneven. It's just easier to pretend that it's like a liner. Just take it and bend it over sideways and you'll end up with stuff that's, you know, evenly spaced out of it. That's kind of why things are, yeah, so why are they hard to use? Like, they're not hard to use if you know how to use them, which is kind of like a butthead thing to say, right? The more that you get accustomed to trying out new things, and I guess if you have a safe space where you can attempt to use these things on like actual tissue versus trying to use them on practice skin, because practice skin is, practice skin is not equivalent to tattooing, right? You need to try this on someone uh, and you need to get their feedback about how it's going, how it's feeling. I mean, try it on yourself. Like, in, I would always suggest that, you know, the top of your thighs is the best place for a tattooer to learn how to do anything. Um, over time, you know, it should just be probably solid black trunks, but you know, that's the, the price you pay to try to understand how these things work. Um, yeah, that, that's probably it. I don't know about too much more right now. My brain is getting a little bit foggy from the, from the flu here, but <clears throat> yeah, I guess that, um, that's it. If you have any questions about this stuff, um, let me know in the comments. Um, if you've listened, I've watched this this whole way through rock and roll. Thank you very much. I'm um, subscribed to the channel as well. We're going to try to, you know, get this, this, uh, website and YouTube channel going and hopefully, you know, people can learn a little bit more. We all start working together, you know, um, proving things wrong, proving things right, you know, going into this, the idea that we're trying to create a better world, you know, in which tattooing is, you know, educated and we're, we're treating our clients and ourselves with respect. I think that, you know, this could be pretty cool because, you know, we don't all have to be artists. Some of us just can just be good technicians, right? Anyways, <clears throat> get a drink of water. That's it. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off.